God so loved the world that he sent his only son into the world itself, and this is how he did it. Once upon a time, when the whole earth was cloaked in a cloud of darkness, God in heaven turned to his angel and said, Gabriel? And the angel said, What, Lord? And God said, Go, go down, go tell my people remarkable news. So there was an angel flying through the night. So swiftly he flew that nobody noticed. Across the continents the angel went to a particular province named Galilee, to a city named Nazareth. And then in that city, to one particular house, to one particular woman sleeping in that house. Her name was Mary. She was young and blameless and lovely in her bed, as innocent as the lily. Her lashes were long and black. She was a virgin, but she dreamed of a man named Joseph because they were betrothed and would marry in four months' time. She was smiling in her sleep. The angel Gabriel appeared at Mary's bedside and began to grow bright. Light beamed in her bedroom, so Mary frowned a little. She turned in her sleep and she sighed. Brighter and brighter grew the angel until he blazed like the sun. God in heaven whispered, Gabriel, why do you hesitate? Talk to her. So the angel opened his mouth and spoke to the woman. Hail, he said. But the angel's voice was like thunder. Poor Mary awoke with a terrible start. Her eyes flew open, and she saw the brilliant light beside her, and she heard the glorious greeting in her ears, and she caught her breath, did Mary, because she was afraid. When the angel had said, Hail, in the middle of the night, like bright explosions in her bedroom, poor Mary jumped and covered her mouth and could not talk, because she was afraid. God in heaven whispered, Hurry, Gabriel. Comfort the woman. So the angel said, Hush, Mary. The angel softened his glorious voice and murmured like rain in the night, Mary, hush. The dear God loves you, don't you know? God favors you and the Lord is with you. God favors me? Mary was trembling. Her mind was racing in the unnatural light. This greeting of the angel troubled her. What does it mean? What is he saying, she thought. Why would an angel come to me? Mary, do not be afraid, said the angel, still more gently. And the light grew warmer than bright, and it touched her, just on the forehead, with a single beam of kindness. So Mary grew calmer, her mind grew quiet, and she began to listen. Behold, said the angel, you will conceive in your womb and bring forth a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. A baby, thought Mary, a baby. Quickly, Gabriel, said God in heaven, tell her quickly what this means. And quickly the angel did a comely thing. He stopped speaking and he started to sing. So marvelous was the meaning of this baby that it wanted a song for the telling. Mary, sang the angel, Mary, the child of thy labor shall be great. The son of the Most High shall he be called, and God shall give him the throne of his father David. Over the house of Jacob shall he reign, forever and ever his kingdom shall have no end. A baby, thought Mary, in spite of the music. How dear was the promise! How deeply she longed for it. But there was a problem she couldn't ignore. Desire was troubled by that problem, and Mary astonished herself. She actually spoke to the angel. How can this be, she blurted. The angel stopped singing, and God in heaven began to smile. Well, maybe the angel didn't understand the nature of human bodies. Some things had to happen first for other things to happen second. How can this be, said Mary, meekly on her bed. I'm not married, you see. I don't have a husband yet. <laughs> that was the problem? Not the greatness of the baby, not his kingship, nor the kingdom, 
that would last forever, but that the baby needed first a father? There came a strange sound in Mary's bedroom then, like the creaking of the walls or the creaking of the universe. It was the angel chuckling. <laughs> For the thing that he was telling Mary was a miracle after all. The new thing God was doing didn't depend on nature. First things needn't come first anymore, and the baby would have a father, but not the kind that Mary imagined. So the angel continued in happy melody to sing, Mary, the Holy Spirit shall come upon thee, the power of God shall overshadow thee, and what shall they call the child that is born to thee? Why, they shall call him Holy, the Son of God. Mary said nothing for a moment. She was grinning and gazing at an angel, and her eyes were bright with the light. A baby, and more than a baby. Oh, the Son of God. Then God would father this baby. Oh. The angel stopped singing and murmured, Mary? Mary raised her eyebrows and stretched her grin from ear to ear. Hmm. With God, the angel assured her, nothing will be impossible. So Mary, kneeling on her bed, Mary, bowing as lovely as the lily, whispered, Behold, deep, deep, inside her stomach, she felt the giggles coming. Behold, she said, I am the handmaid of the Lord. Be it unto me according to your word. Which word was, Mary is going to have a baby. <laughs> yes. So the angel was done and he dimmed. The bright light faded from her bedroom. Gabriel vanished altogether. But Mary didn't mind the darkness now. A baby! Oh, she jumped from her bed, and the giggles tickled her throat. Oh, she clapped her hands and twirled about, and her dark hair flew like a glory around her head. Oh, the virgin was laughing now, for the virgin was going to have a baby. So, who had news for the telling now? And who would burst if she couldn't tell it? Mary. So now there was a blameless, beautiful woman running through the world, the dark world, as fast as she could go. None of the people noticed her go. She didn't mind. She was grinning and full of good news. South she ran to a particular province named Judea, to a particular hill, and on that hill to one particular house and one particular woman in that house her friend, her cousin Elizabeth. Elizabeth, hello! Just as the angel had greeted Mary, Mary now greeted Elizabeth, and Elizabeth began immediately to laugh. And just as the angel had sung his celestial song for her, she sang a song for Elizabeth. My soul, sang Mary, O cousin, my soul doth magnify the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. He is keeping his promises to us. Elizabeth, I'm going to have a baby. So then, in the middle of the gloomy world, there were two women laughing. They laughed till they couldn't laugh any more, and then they began to weep for gladness. And God looked down from heaven and saw them. And the Lord God smiled. When Mary had returned to Nazareth, the man whom she was going to marry began to notice changes in her. Now the world was very dark in those days, and people are scared in the dark, you know. But they are especially scared of changes in the dark like moving furniture or changing your habits or changing your mind. Because if people don't understand these changes, they bump against them and hurt themselves and cry. In the long, long night when people had only their candles for seeing, change was considered a dangerous thing. Therefore, Joseph became suspicious of the changes that he saw in Mary. Why do you smile all the time, he said. And she said, oh, you'll see. Why are you always giggling? Why do you laugh all the time? And, and, and what is that strange light in your eyes, said Joseph. And Mary said, you'll see. 
Well, soon Joseph saw, and what he saw distressed him. He saw that her tummy was growing big. Joseph saw that Mary was going to have a baby, and this upset him because he wasn't the baby's father. But he truly loved Mary, so he felt hurt as well as sad because somebody else must be the baby's father. How did this happen? he asked her. But she said, it was the Holy Spirit. And poor Joseph grew simply miserable. Mary is lying to me, he said. In those days, the dark world had some dark rules by which a man could put a woman away, and then it would be as if they had never been married at all. If a woman had a baby by someone besides her husband, then her husband could put the woman away. That was the rule. One night, Joseph lay in his bed and thought about this rule. He said the words out loud. He said, I will put her away. And he almost started to cry. He was a good man, was Joseph. He didn't want his Mary to suffer the shame of the gossip of the people who walked in darkness. Oh, wagging tongues, he shouted. Oh, wagging nasty tongues. You shall not hurt my Mary. Therefore, he decided to put her away privately so that no one would know what he was doing or the sinful thing that she had done to be with child before they married. With such heavy thoughts on his mind, poor Joseph fell asleep. Then God in heaven turned to his angel. Gabriel, said God. And the angel said, What, Lord? Go down, said God. Go down right now. Tell Joseph the truth. The man is blinded by the darkness. He thinks that Mary has committed a sin. Go, go. So a light grew bright in Joseph's sleep, and the brightness was a dream. But the light was the angel Gabriel, so close to the man that he shined inside his mind. Joseph, son of David, said the angel. Joseph slept on, but Joseph heard and saw and he remembered. And the more he heard, the happier he became until there was a man in Nazareth who was smiling in his sleep. Joseph, do not be afraid to take Mary for your wife, said the angel. The baby conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. Mary didn't sin. Mary doesn't lie. Mary is going to have a baby boy, and you shall call him Jesus. And this is what his name means, that he will save his people from their sins. Listen, listen, sin is the darkness of the world. This baby shall be its light for he shall shine in the dark and take its sin away. Emmanuel is the infant that shall be born, which means God with us. Joseph, God is keeping his promises. Joseph, something wonderful is happening. Even in his sleep, the man was smiling as broad as a barn, and when he woke, he was positively grinning. The people in Nazareth noticed the change in him and they became suspicious. Why do you smile all the time, they asked. Why are you always giggling? Oh, said Joseph, I'm getting married. But even after they were married, Mary and Joseph seemed odd to the people in darkness. Why are you laughing all the time, they demanded. Why, why don't you fuss or fight? And what is that strange light in your eye? You'll see, they said. They giggled and said, you'll see. So Mary grew big and bigger with her child. And Joseph put his hand on her tummy and laughed because he felt the baby kick. And God looked down from heaven too. And the Lord God smiled. Now it came to pass in those dark days that there went out a command from Caesar that all the people should be counted. A census, he decreed. Citizens, go to the cities of your ancestors to be counted according to families there. So people began to travel. So Joseph, too, obeyed the command. He and Mary traveled south together to the province named Judea, to a particular city of David 
called Bethlehem. But in that city to no particular house at all, for they had no house in Bethlehem. Joseph was a descendant of David, that's why he came to Bethlehem. But there were hundreds and hundreds of others descended from David. The city was crowded with people. That's why there were no houses nor rooms at all where Joseph could lay his Mary down to rest for a while and stay. Even the inn was full, but the night was dark and cold, the night was deep and lonely, and Mary was huge with her child and tired. She wasn't grinning anymore, was Mary. She was groaning. Joseph, she whispered. It's time, oh Joseph, she said. The baby is coming, it's time. Mary, can, can you wait a little longer? No, she said. Mary, there's no place for us. It's time, she said. So Joseph went running through the streets of the city. People were sleeping. Nobody noticed. Nobody answered his knocking. So this is all he could find, a stable where travelers tethered their beasts where, when they slept, a little shelter against the night. Mary, he said when he led her there, do you mind? No, she said. Can you lie on the straw? It's time, she said and knelt down. So there it was that she brought forth her firstborn son, and she wrapped him in swaddling clothes and laid him in a manger, because there was no room for them in the inn. And there were shepherds in that same dark country, abiding in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. And God turned to his angel, and God said, Gabriel? And the angel answered, Yes, Lord. And the Lord God said, Go down, all of the people must know, they must know what I am doing, tired and lonely and scattered and scared, all of the people must hear it. Go, good Gabriel, go down again, go tell a few to tell others until every child has heard it. Go! And so it was that the angel of the Lord appeared to the weary shepherds. Their dark was shattered, for the glory of the Lord shone round about them, and they were sore afraid. The angel said to them, Don't be afraid! But the light was like a hard and holy wind, and the shepherds shielded their faces with their arms. Hush! said the angel. Hush! like the west wind. Shepherds, I bring you good news of great joy, and not only for you, but for all of the people. Listen! So shepherds were squinting and blinking, and shepherds began to listen, but none of them had the courage to talk or to answer a thing. For unto you is born this day in the city of David, said the angel, a Savior who is Christ the Lord, and this will be a sign for you. You will find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. Suddenly, the sky itself split open, and like the fall of a thousand stars, the light poured down. There came with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glo Glory to God, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, peace to the people with whom God is pleased. But hush, you shepherds, hush in your wonder, for the choral singing soon was ended, the hosts ascended, and the sky was closed again, and then there came a breeze and a marvelous quiet in the simple dark of night. It was just that, no terror in that then. It was only the night, no deeper gloom than evening, for not all the light had gone back into heaven. The light of the world himself stayed down on earth and near you now. And you can talk now. Try your voices. Try to speak. Ah, God has given you generous voices, shepherds. Speak. So then, this is what the shepherds said to one another. Let us, they said, go over to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has made known to us. 
So the shepherds got up and ran as fast as they could to the city of Bethlehem, to a particular stable in that city. And in that stable, they gazed on one particular baby lying in a manger. Then, in that moment, everything was fixed in a lambent memorial light. For there was the infant, just waking, just lifting his arms to the air and making sucking motions with his mouth. The holy child was hungry. And there was his mother, lying on straw as lovely as the lily and listening to the noises of her child. Joseph, she murmured. And there was Joseph, as sturdy as a barn, just bending toward his Mary. What? he whispered. And the shepherd's eyes were shining for what they saw, exactly as though it were morning and not the night. The shepherds went out into the city and began immediately to tell everyone what the angel had said about this child. They left a trail of startled people behind as on they went, both glorifying and praising God. But Mary did not so much as rise that night. She received the baby from Joseph's hands, then placed him down at her breast while she lay on her side on straw. With one arm she cradled the infant against her body, on the other arm, bent at the elbow, she rested her head, and she gazed at her small son sucking. Mary lowered her long black lashes and watched him and loved him and murmured, Jesus, Jesus, for the baby's name was Jesus. Joseph, she said without glancing up, and Joseph said, What? But Mary fell silent and said no more. She was keeping all these things, all that had happened between the darkness and the light, and pondering them in her heart.